Rolf? Uh -uh. Huh? Want to get back together? Okay. Good. Even before Jim Henson's death in 1990, the Muppets felt like they were on the outskirts of pop culture. After The Muppet Show ended its five-season run in 1981, the Muppet characters struggled to find purpose. They'd have a film every few years and would make various late-night talk show appearances, but never garnered the same appeal that they had while being a part of The Muppet Show. One-off situations would give hope to longtime Muppet fans, like A Muppet Christmas Carol or Muppet Treasure Island. The debut of ABC's Muppets Tonight in the mid-90s felt like it could have been a return to greatness, but that show was moved off of ABC to the lesser-viewed Disney Channel before its cancellation. When Disney outright purchased the Muppets in 2004, it didn't really feel like anything significant was changing. In fact, it felt like the Muppets were less relevant at that time than they'd ever been. Plagued with being a part of made-for-TV movies or stuck making short videos on YouTube, Disney's purchase of the Muppets seemed to be more about the distribution of older Muppet shows and films rather than truly trying to bring back the Muppets in any way. After 2008's Forgetting Sarah Marshall, where actor and writer Jason Siegel, along with Jim Henson's Creature Shop, created a Dracula-themed puppet musical for the film, Siegel looked at producing an actual Muppet movie. Sadly, the Dracula musical was never real and was only part of that fictional world in Sarah Marshall, but the idea of creating a new Muppets film actually took off. Jason Siegel, along with Sarah Marshall co-writer Nicholas Stoller, would end up writing a script and pitching a revival of the Muppets to Disney. In 2011, the seventh Muppet film, simply titled The Muppets, was released. And as of making this video, it's been 10 years since that film's release. So what happened? My name's Josh Taylor, this is Modern Mouse, and today I wanna to talk about the legacy of Jason Siegel's Muppet film, the future that that movie promised, and how that promise paid off 10 years later. The Muppets had a lot of buzz going into it. For longtime fans, this was the true revival that many of us had been waiting for. For a younger demographic, this could be their point of entry for the Muppets. In fact, a fellow YouTuber of mine, Aiden Elizabeth, said so in her own video. I was nine years old when this movie came out, and I very distinctly remember seeing it in the theater. I didn't grow up with The Muppet Show, and I certainly didn't have any interests in puppetry as an art form or what went into making the things that I saw on screen. But then I saw the 2011 Muppet movie, and everything changed. This is the movie that sparked my love for Jim Henson's creations and puppetry in general, a love that obviously never went away. Something to consider was tone. The Muppets of the 1970s and 80s were not the Muppets of the 1990s and the 21st century. When Jim Henson first introduced The Muppet Show with a pilot episode called Sex and Violence, there was a bit of danger to The Muppets. The variety show was staged to always look like it was getting out of hand, and that Kermit was consistently having to worry about the show pushing the edges of what was acceptable. The chaos of the early Muppets slowly transitioned to something more playful and childlike. The 2011 film was looking to find the right balance of family entertainment that also incorporated the chaotic and clever act of the early years. Jason Siegel said it best when he stated, I think there is a misconception that a family film has come to mean children's film, and that's not what it has to be like. The Muppets have an inherent tone that was never going to be dirty or raunchy, though I'm sure the executives were nervous that we were doing the Muppets with a sense of irony. But it doesn't take long to realize that we had a pure love for the Muppets. The tone that Siegel and Stoller were setting for this film was harkening back to the earlier days of the Muppets, and puppeteers that had worked with the Muppets for years were helping and adding in their input. This was a film being made for fans by fans. And that being said, the movie paid off pretty well with a $165 million box office. That's not billion dollar Marvel money, but it was the most money that the Muppets had ever made in theaters. And the promise of a Muppets revival seemed like it was coming true. The film's success came from playing on nostalgia. 
while also trying to create new and interesting jokes based on the comedy that Jason Segel had done with Sarah Marshall and previous projects. There's still a cute innocence with the Muppets, something that they had been known for during the 90s and 2000s, but there was also an emotional intelligence to the film. It was a comedy first and foremost, but it also wasn't afraid to be sad and serious at times, or to step over the line with its absurdity. All right, have a seat. Ah, thank okay. you. I think I'll stand. No, really, you should try one. Comfy. It's our executive line of used toilets. Mm -hmm. Disney wanted to capitalize on the success, and they put a sequel into production right away. Stoller would turn to right alongside James Bobbin, who had also directed the 2011 film. He would be co-writing and directing the sequel Muppets Most Wanted. Jason Segel didn't return though, and I think that's where things went wrong. Muppets Most Wanted is a fine film, but it doesn't feel like it capitalizes off of the tone that was set from the 2011 movie. It feels more like the films of the 90s and 2000s, dodging the emotional moments and sticking to more true laughs. It also didn't push any boundaries or try to move the Muppets in a new direction. Ultimately, it was a misfire, but there was still hope to capitalize on the success of that 2011 film. In 2015, ABC greenlit a Muppets primetime TV show, returning the characters to their origins for the first time in almost two decades. The show followed the Muppets in a mockumentary style as they put together a late night talk show starring Miss Piggy. It wasn't the variety show format of the 1970s, but the late night show was something that newer audiences would be more familiar with. It would give the cast an excuse to bring on celebrity guests and to crack jokes both in front of an audience and behind the scenes, but the show had troubles before it ever got going. A storyline about Kermit and Miss Piggy breaking up was used as a marketing tactic, with the pair of characters making headlines and visiting several talk shows. The new TV show introduced Denise, Kermit's new girlfriend, and a character that turned off a lot of potential viewers, still clamoring for the nostalgia that the 2011 film delivered on. During the show's 16 episode first season, ABC came in and shook up the production team hoping for more serialized storylines. When the show failed to capture an audience in its first season, ABC just canceled it altogether. Barely having started and having production changes mid-season, it felt like it didn't even have a chance to capture a real audience. And I think it's at this moment that the Muppets just lost their momentum once again. Since ABC's cancellation, the Muppets have had a few projects. They appeared at Walt Disney World for a show about American history, which got rave reviews. And as far as theme parks go, they were a part of Disneyland's 2021 Christmas celebration called Marius Nights, which also got rave reviews. The first Muppets project for Disney's new streaming service, Disney Plus, was a slap together show of short skits initially intended for YouTube. The show Muppets Now felt like something to quiet fans, hoping for something bigger and better. But this move proved that Disney just doesn't know what to do with the Muppets, and honestly, I don't blame them. Making the Muppets Haunted Mansion in 2021 was a cheap and easy way to keep fans happy while also not breaking the bank and trying to resurrect the franchise. But its emphasis isn't establishing the Muppets again, rather just keeping them going as long as possible. The Muppets struggle to stay relevant in pop culture comes from a disconnect between nostalgia, tone, and contemporary media. The 2011 film combined a lot of these things perfectly. It's a film that both older and younger audiences embrace together. How do we find Kermit? Nobody's seen him in years. <gasps> Stop the car! I've got an idea! Like Siegel said, it was a family film with an emphasis on family rather than children something the Muppets had been connected with since the early 90s. The tone set by the film didn't work outside of its nostalgia though. The Muppets TV show from 2015 kept the tone of the film, but in trying a new format, failed to connect with the audiences in the time that it had. Should ABC and Disney have trusted that it would eventually connect, or should it have been sold to a streaming service like Netflix who were also in the running to get that show? It's possible that it might have worked. 
Hey, you you miss Piggy? Oh uh, yeah! Uh, well, I never meet your heroes, yes! you know? Sorry. Josh Gad actually pitched a Muppets show for Disney Plus, and Disney ended up passing on that project, going with Muppets Now instead. Steve Whitmire was also let go from his voice role as Kermit when he was speaking out about what he thought the 2015 show should have been like. What was once a very hopeful future for the Muppets ultimately became another misfire. And it's difficult to point out who's to blame here. It's easy to look at a giant conglomerate like Disney and say that they just don't understand the Muppets. The unfortunate reality is that the Muppets are a hard act to handle and to balance. Because these characters span different generations with different tones, the nostalgia for the 1970s Muppets isn't the same nostalgia for the 1990s Muppets. And those two things don't connect with anything that Disney's done since they've owned the Muppets. It took a special team that understood the Muppets through all generations to deliver something that appealed to a large audience. It pains me to say this, but the Muppets will likely never be as popular as they once were and are more likely stuck being a nostalgia act rather than being something new and exciting. The 2011 film was a rare moment in time where all of the right people came together, but rather than reviving the Muppets, it now seems like it was a tribute film, a fan-made film for fans. And there isn't anything wrong with that either, but I have to suggest that we shouldn't be holding up a project as the next revival of a franchise that we grew up with. The 2011 film isn't a failure, despite not reviving the Muppets. I consider this film a success because it reminded us all why the Muppets were so great to begin with. And it didn't need to be more than that, honestly. Sometimes it's best to celebrate what we have or what was, cherishing the right now rather than hoping for the potential of the future. Thank you all for watching this video. Uh, this is the beginning of a new series for me on this channel, so look out for more 10 years later videos coming hopefully really soon. In the meantime, check out one of my other Muppets videos right here or the Muppets playlist that goes along with it to check out everything I've got going on on this channel featuring the Muppets. And if you've not subscribed to the channel, please do so. I talk about everything under the Disney umbrella and that includes the Muppets. So enjoy and join me. And until next time, my friends, thank you for watching. And as always, keep moving forward.